What's up everybody? My name is Shantoria. Welcome to the video and I pray you all are doing well. I feel that crossover artists and features in pop music can go hand in hand. Like how we saw in the 2010s with big name artists like Justin Bieber, Beyonce, and Cardi B were featured in Latin music, which by the way has only grown in popularity since then, as well as K-pop. And now artists in African countries are now getting some mainstream attention here in the Americas, which I find is so cool and so dope. I need to check out some artists in African countries because I love that Netflix show. What was it? I need to look up the name of it, but I love this Netflix show. I'm going to put it up here. <laughs> <laughs> because they just do luxury so differently in African countries and I feel like it's just top tier, top tier rich and I love it. I love it. So many of my favorite artists cross over into different genres and according to what I read on Masterclass, crossover music refers to music recordings or performers with broad audience appeal and chart success, applying to recordings of any genre that achieve mainstream success on more than one industry chart that tracks songs or albums in a particular genre or musical style. For example, Taylor Swift's love story became a hit became a hit among pop fans, which helped become which helped it become the first country song to top the Billboard mainstream top 40 chart. No surprise there, but before I get further into this, you all be sure to subscribe and check out my other content here on my channel. And now I want to get into pop features, specifically, well, features in pop music, specifically rap features, because of its popularity amongst the youth. I say youth, but I really mean like Gen Z. <laughs> Though I will be only talking about rap features in American pop music, there are so many artists of different genres that collaborate all the time. I just want to talk about this one specifically because like I said, it's popular amongst Gen Z and it's popular amongst Gen Z. They gravitate more towards rap and R&B influenced music. So that's why. And I say this without doing any form of research. This is just my perspective my observation. The first mainstream pop and rap collaboration was in 1986 when Run DMC recreated the 1975 song Walk This Way by Aerosmith. The song broke barriers and helped set the tone for further collaborations between rap artists and other genres. In late July of 1990, the song She Ain't Worth It by Glenn Mendiros featuring Bobby Brown was released, becoming the first sing and rap pairing to chart in Billboard history. The song went number one and debuted the word feature in a song. I don't believe this to be true personally because the Run DMC song said featuring Aerosmith and I feel like these specific type of things are very hard to trace back and when it was actually featured or first used. And I'm sure you can. I, it's just, you know, charting. I, for, I think the charts became a thing in like the 20s, 1920s, I believe. I'll put it up here specifically when the charts actually came out. I actually think it's 1940 something, actually. But yeah, I don't think that, I don't think that's, that is true, though, that they featured it. But I'm sure it became popular, possibly, once the song, once She Ain't Worth It became number one. And actually features did become popular on the charts for the last quarter century. And noting the featured artist's name in the title actually helps introduce said artist to their collaborator's audience. According to the article featured on Film Me Now written by Chris Malunfi, one third of the charts consisted of one-off collaborations in 2015. Actually, collaborations can be seen on the charts as far back as the 60s, but the industry didn't want the featured artist's name in the title because they wanted the main artist to be the focus. And I'm pretty sure that's when gatekeeping was at its prime. Actually, in today's streaming world, you will see both the featured artist as well as the main artist written in the title. Well, not in the title, but as the main artist of the song. And I think that's because if someone is interested in one or the other, they will be able to see, have that song in their catalog and maybe even feel encouraged to check out said featured artist's music. So technology really has changed the way we actually interact with music and finding other artists. 
A notable figure in pop music having rap features is Miss Mariah Carey herself, specifically with her song Fantasy, which was Mariah's ninth number one hit in the U.S. She actually became the first female artist, second overall, to have her lead single go number one. The first was Michael Jackson with the song You Are Not Alone, and no surprise there. <laughs> The Fantasy remix is actually credited to popularize pop artists collaborating with rappers. And almost 40 years later, pop, rock, and country artists have rap features within their music. Mariah's Fantasy era was actually her crossing over into the hip hop slash R&B genre. So according to the definition of what a crossover artist is, Mariah is considered one charting in pop, R&B slash hip hop dance and Latin music just to name a few and really doing a feature or collaboration with an artist in a different genre from your own really helps introduce said featured artists into a different market it can actually help them break into it or even see better charting success within it Now, no artist is truly 100% one genre, being influenced by many different sounds, instrumentation, and elements over the past decades within different genres. Which is why it makes sense for artists to experiment not just on their singles or albums, but also their clothing aesthetic to match the music. Madonna is known for this, as well as Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift, Mostly women really doing the changing up in, with the aesthetics. I mean, I'm sure some men do, but it's not as known, well known at all, or really done often. I mean, if you know any male artists that switch up their aesthetics, please let me know down in the comments below because I'm genuinely curious. And really experimenting with different genres or even going into a different genre period can actually help revitalize an artist's career. And one artist in particular that I instantly think of is Miss Becky G. I love Becky G! Becky's career really has found a new life within Latin music. Though she did say in her rap in Becky from the Block that she would be a crossover. <laughs> I really think that pivoting into live music really helped expand her audience into not just English speakers, but also Spanish speakers, as well as other people of different languages, uh, you know, who don't speak English or Spanish. Becky's one of my favorite performers. It still frustrates me to this day that I missed her performance in 2019 at the Houston Rodeo. I wish I could have gone, but hopefully I'll be able to see her on tour this year. Please, Jesus, make it possible. <laughs> Though she does not have much English music, I really do people really be sleeping on her English music. Greenlight Go and LBD are my favorite ones so far, and hopefully she releases more. Possibly an album? English and Spanish, of course, you know, you gotta, you know, both markets. <laughs> and I say this because I'm so very curious of what Becky's English music sound would be because the market is different from Spanish speaking music. So I am very curious to hear her style and actually even hear some Latin flair in there. You know, it, it's so cool. I'm very curious. As much as I do love the song Shower, I would love for Becky to have a bigger song than that one here in America. <laughs> Oh, and also, Becky, I have a question. Why have you not released your solo version of Cuando Te Bese? That, oh my god, your second verse goes so hard and I need it on the playlist. My neck, my back, hey, kissy, kissy, kissy boy, just like that. <laughs> okay, y'all, if you haven't seen that performance, I'm, it's on YouTube. You can find it somewhere on YouTube. Oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> The next artist I want to talk about is Miss Taylor Swift, who has seen success in country, pop, rock, alternative. She has basically mastered evolving with the changes in music. I was actually looking at her Billboard charting, and she has so many songs that have done all too well. <laughs> That's so bad! All but one of her albums have went number one. Taylor has broken so many freaking records. And really, Miss Miss Swift's career is solidified, okay? She <laughs> and she really just keeps hitting it and hitting it and hitting it every single time. And really, that's what all of us artists really plan and hope to see. Because I think it was really Tina Turner who who really was groundbreaking in that area because specifically she 
I don't know if any more artists, female artists specifically, really have seen a huge re revitalization of their career past 40. And really, that's when Tina became Tina Turner. Many people knew her from Ike and Tina, but Tina Turner, separately from that, that's really unheard of for an artist, specifically a female artist, especially a black female artist for that matter, to have such huge success past the age of 40 and to really be seen as the queen of rock and roll. And it hurts my heart that she recently passed away. But you know what? Her memory and her impact on music lives on. And Tina is another one of my favorite performers. I love her so much. <laughs> The what you get is what you see music video is my favorite one and it's because of the hair flip. <laughs> you have to see it. It's so funny. Oh my god, it's so funny. I love it. And I already mentioned Mariah Carey and Fantasy is all but one of her many, many hits and musical historical highlights. Being able to work with other artists is a great opportunity to not just expand your audience, but to build on your craft and have that natural growth and progression into having charting crossover success that many dream of having. So now I pass it on to you. Who are some of your favorite crossover artists and which other collaborations do you enjoy listening to? Let me know down in the comments below and I pray you all have a blessed rest of your day and an awesome rest of your week. Peace out.